Now, we said prudence as a utensil of wisdom. Wisdom builds. Every, every house is built by wisdom, like I told you. And Proverbs chapter 9 says, Wisdom has built a house, she has hewn it with seven pillars. So I told you that these seven pillars are the utensils, the truths, the building material that you wisdom, building materials that wisdom uses to construct. That if you have these in your life, you have capacity to construct any aspect of your life. And these are also systems, meaning that by you creating these systems for your life, you are able to replicate it anywhere. These are systems to manage your life, you can manage your career, your finances, your relationships, your marriage, your businesses, and everything that consigns you. These systems of wisdom can help you maximize wisdom effectively. It can help you build at any given time or can help you build in any place you find yourself. And we looked at prudence yesterday and I told you that prudence is your capacity to see and discern danger and to hide yourself. And we looked at prudence again from the angle of management of talents and resources. And I told you, your ability to manage your talent, your resources, all that God has given to you. Your ability to manage everything that God has placed in your hands. Your ability to also manage your talent, your personal talent. Beyond money and beyond material things, your ability to manage your own potentials is prudence. Capacity to manage them, to utilize them, to create solutions is prudence. Many people have resources in them, but they have undermanaged their resources. And yet they have something that would have made them very wealthy. But yet they are suffering in penury. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 talks about um, a king or a city that was besieged. And a poor wise man was in that city. The Bible says he by his wisdom delivered that city. But yet nobody remembered him. So they were billionaires, they were rich people. They were influential people, they were politicians in that same city. Every one of them ran when war came. None of them had the wisdom to deliver their city. Yet with their money, with their influence, with their power. This poor but wise man, through his wisdom, delivered that city. But in the end of the day, that was an opportunity to make him a national hero. An opportunity to crown him. That was an opportunity to leave poverty for life. That was an opportunity to walk away from misery for life an opportunity to terminate lack and want that man would have been the richest with that one opportunity but the bible said that yet nobody remembered him everybody forgot him nobody remembered that he became the system to save the whole city people rejoiced that their city was saved and they forgot the person who did it so the national hero was forgotten he died in penury. He died in misery. He died not being honored for what he did for the nation. The nation forgot him. So what was, was the problem? Was it wisdom that was the problem? Or was it his poverty that was the problem? What was really the problem? Or was it the nation that was the problem? Or was it the king that didn't remember that this man saved our nation? So what was really the problem that this same man remained poor, yet he had an opportunity to turn his fortunes around? That is a raw application of lack of prudence. That is a visible expression, biblical expression of lack of prudence. So what was missing, what was the prudence missing from that adventure of that poor wise man? The prudence there was that you have dwelt in this city long enough, you should have understood your city, you should have understood your nation. You have dealt in this city long enough. You should have known how to conduct business. It is very, very easy. The prudence there is that for me to save this city, I would have negotiated my way with the king. I would have negotiated my terms with the king. That was the prudence. What was the talent or the gift or the resource he had? Wisdom. But lack of prudence made him to use his resource and nothing came for him in the end of the day. It's simple. King, I have an idea. I know how to save the city. But this is the times. And this is the condition for me to save the city. Even David, when he came to fight Goliath, had to negotiate the conditions for him to go and risk his life. 
<laughs> ah, I have the skill. I can take down this giant. But what shall be done for the man who will take down the giant? And they said he will not pay, will not pay any other tax in the whole of Israel. He will be married to the king. He will be the king's in-law. He will have so-so-and-so field, so-so-and-so land for farms. By the time they explained the benefit of risking, he said, okay, let's write an agreement. Let's go and see the king so that we know that these things are binding, that I want to go and risk myself to fight this uncircumcised Philistine. Was David a child of God? Yes, he was a child of God. He would have, he would have done or he would have behaved spiritual or holy. Or oh, I'm a child of God. Yeah, well, Jesus commanded us to love. Yes, love is a command, but foolishness is not part of the command. Jesus commanded us to love, but he didn't command you to be foolish. And he didn't tell you to become a fool for love. You're only permitted to be a fool for love for only one person, which is Jesus. Your love for Jesus should drive you like a foolish person, not for any other thing. The poor wise man had no prudence. The lack of prudence there is capacity to negotiate ability for negotiation so he went on his own volition without any agreement he went on his own on his own accord and did the city a kind gesture and nobody remembered him he can never take them to court because there is no case to answer there was no agreement written nobody begged you for your help nobody begged for your assistance you on your own decided to go without discerning the place where you are. <laughs> Knowing where you are, you should know that negotiation is the first thing. Do you know that Jephthah acted in prudence? Jephthah was a mighty man of valor. He dwelt with worthless men in Tob and became a warrior. Trained himself in the act of war. So what is the resource he had or the talent he had? He had the talent and the resource of warfare. He had the ability for military might. He had capacity and intelligence to engage war. That was his skill. That was his bargaining power. When Gilead came, the same Gilead that drove him, when the people of Gilead came to beg of his assistance to help fight the enemies, Jephthah was not foolish. He didn't say, these are my brethren. The Bible says, forgive and forget. Yes, forgive. Forget or add wisdom. <laughs> Don't be foolish. In applying spiritual laws and principles that's another problem we have with certain christians there are certain christians that go over and above they act in excess certain others apply in foolishness at the end of the day there will be no result that's the case i told you about somebody who was sowing sowing seed god was opening channels and giving you capital for business you are busy sowing seeds lack of prudence jephthah said to them i will fight I'm forgiving whatever you guys did to me. You chased me away. He said, I'm my bastard. I have no issue with that. I will fight, but let's sign an agreement. He said, Jephthah, we just need you to fight. You will be our king. You will be our king if you, if you win this battle. Jephthah said, I beg, wait, calm down. It's not about saying you will be our king. We will put it to writing. You people, I know what you did to me many years ago. So I know now you are in desperation. You have forgotten I'm a bastard. Now I will go and fight and come back and you say you're a bastard. The Bible says you bring out the Torah and you read and say the Lord said that a bastard shall not dwell in the cause of God. He said no. Uh, what you're saying is sweet. The, 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 the reward is so sweet that nobody will look, see the reward and deny. And say no I wouldn't go. The reward is so sweet but we need to put it down in writing. Let there be an agreement. Let the elders of Gilead sign that this is your agreement that I will be your king if I go to this battle and win. And they signed it. And all Gilead agreed. Jephthah, if you win, be our king. We don't care about what the Torah said. Hmm. Prudence. Somebody, you are gaining light here and you are gaining wisdom here. Let me tell you this. I said it many a few years ago on my podcast. When I had the podcast before, it was taken down for no reason. I don't know why they took over 150 episodes of podcast down. There was something I said on that, on one of my podcasts. I said, know when to sell and know when to give for free. Know when to request and know when to say, I'm giving you for free. Not everything is for free. Know when to negotiate 
and know when to refrain from negotiation. There are many people where they, they were supposed to make negotiations. They acted like Christians and believers, born again. The Lord said we should love and the Lord said we should give. But in that situation, that was the spirit of foolishness playing a part. At that time, the wisdom there is to negotiate. There are some others where they are supposed to give for free. They start negotiating. Foolishness is also playing a part there. You must understand that your ability to discern these two conditions is prudence. For that poor wise man, that was not the time to do anything free for the nation. That was not the time. There are nations you will be, there are nations you will find yourself, you will do it for free and you will get a reward. But there are nations you find yourself, you know that if I do anything for free here, these people are so callous and wicked and they will forget me. Let me negotiate the terms. Jephthah knew his people were very bad. David knew that they saw, ah, no, I can't go and risk my life. At the end of the day, they will tell me, thank you. No, let's, let's negotiate. What shall be done? Yet he's from Israel. He would have said, well, it's my nation, it's my country. Let me, let me fight as a hero and die as a hero. And he said, no. I, I, I won't just go out there ordinarily. What will be done? That is capacity to manage your resource. I'm speaking about this in the angle of your talent, your potentials. I'm not talking about money management now or any other material management. I'm talking about talent management, skill management, value management. That's why I say, Pastor, not everywhere I agree to speak. Not every invitation I honor. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Because there are places you go, you will reduce yourself in honor if you don't hear God. Prudence. That is why I can never market my gift. Nobody can come to me and say, well, you want, you want to pay me? Pay me for counseling. It doesn't happen. Even there are seas we reject on this, on this mountain. There are seas we reject. There are people who, who actually say, no, God bless you. Not every seed will accept. I don't even accept anything from everybody. Prudence. There are people I meet as I'm praying for them the first time. They already say, oh, man of God, this prayer, bless me. Send your account details. Let's send it. I say, well, relax yourself. We just met. We are just beginning the sections and you're already talking about seed. Relax. Let God begin to work before you talk about seed. Let begin to see improvement. Don't be overly excited. These are emotional giving. I say, just relax. There is time. Is it because of the way I prayed? If you meet me, I carry a person of favor. It's an anointing on me. That one I know. I carry grace for favor. You meet me, you will like me. You have a one-on-one -on -one with me, you will fall in love with me. Uh, that I already know. So I'm not bamboozled by that. Mm -hmm. So you, who has a skill, who has a talent, whom God has put potentials in you, part of the problems why you are having issues with customers, most especially your family members, <laughs> who are an acclaimed customer, because you have not been able to put prudence family members, friends, they patronize you and they don't pay and you're complaining. No prudence. That's why. They don't discern your value. You have customers who are owing you. They've been owing you for two years. Ah, no prudence. They don't discern value. So they felt like I can hold, tie down her money, tie down her business, do, give at any time. Some of you borrowed money to the wrong people. There are people who are your friends, you are not supposed to give them money. But you gave them your hard-earned savings, trusting them to pay back at the, at the appointed time. Now they are disappointing you. Now you are running health as Keta because of lack of prudence. Hmm. Somebody, you are getting light. There are friends I have, I can't borrow them money. Yeah, they are friends because they are beneficial to me in many aspects. But when it comes in terms of money, when they say, eh, sir, please, something came up. Give me this amount of money. I will give you back in so-so day. I'll say, fa, 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 fa. I'm not giving you. You're not credit worthy. That's prudence. <laughs> That's me not being harsh because I'm not stingy. They know I'm not stingy. I say for you, nah, you're not credit worthy. You're not credit worthy. If I, if I have money to spare, I will give you. But you're not giving me back. You are taking. But for you to pay me back, nah. I know I've been with you for years. You're not credit worthy. So I, I wouldn't guarantee what you're saying. That's prudence. 
Uh, yada, bada, yada. Receive grace to manage your resources today. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Some of you, the, the wisdom of God will come upon you. You will know how to begin to negotiate. There are places you will be, you will know how to negotiate. There are things you don't need to do for free anymore. There are things you need to actually negotiate. Some of you, you have landed into problems because you started, you started doing things for free and people have not taken it for granted. Now you are trying to place a price on it. Place a, a, a price tag. They don't want to do that anymore. You are now disadvantaged because you started with, uh, with, without prudence. You will say, okay, let's do things for free and now it has gone. It has gone south. The poor wise man was just lack of prudence. Jephthah was in his position, but Jephthah applied prudence. David was in his position. David applied prudence. He went out of his benevolence. Let's just do a good service for our nation. And the nation forgot about them. It takes the summit. What am I saying? There are times you will negotiate and there are times you need not negotiate. There are times you say, what shall be done for me? What is in it for me? There are times you say, you, you don't even think about what is in it for me. You just give your service. But you must be able to understand those contrasts. That's prudence. Your ability to discern those moments. It was an opportunity for lifting. Jephthah maximized it. David maximized it. The poor wise man failed in that test. Then we defined prudence as wisdom in relationships. Wisdom in relationships wisdom in your relationship with others now in relating with others there are four groups of people that you must surround yourself with so i've i've started for today i, I need to expand on relationship talking about prudence prudence is your ability to manage relationships very well and um i trust god for those of you in the study group when we came to the you, your relationship container there are many things i, I also mentioned these things i mentioned there and deeper deeper things i'm going to mention about relationships because these are very very powerful for your existence in life and you need prudence to manage all your relationships like i told you if you quarrel every time you're quarreling you're quarreling you're having issues with people everywhere you go you have issues with people there's something wrong with you we need to begin to check you we begin we need to watch you we need to move our eyes away from the people that are offending you to you now we need to now study you what is your problem what energies are you emitting how are you carrying yourself what personas do people have about you what perception do people have about you why will you always have problems with everybody anywhere you go everybody must not like you but you must not have problems with everybody Somebody must like you. And if you have bad people around you, everybody that is around you is either a gossip, either a cheat, either a rebellious person, either somebody who knows how to break rank, sow the seed of the court. People, people who are hanging around are people who have capacity to, to scatter. People who lack integrity. And you are the only good person around them. Something is also wrong. Meaning that you are, you are emitting negative charges negative energies that are attracting these negative people around you there's something that is coming from you that is calling for all these kind of people a drunkard can, can, can be hanging around me no a womanizer can be hanging around me a smoker can be hanging around me a defrauder a froster a yahoo yahoo like we call them here what, what will you be doing my environment my atmosphere insists that such kind of energies can be around me there are four kinds of people that should surround you. If you are a prudent person, there are four persons that must be in your life. If you don't have them, just know that you need to work on your prudent level to begin to attract such people into your life. Number one, the people who know all your weaknesses, but they will not judge you. Mm. If you are working in prudence, the first set of people who must surround you, who must be in your circle, are people who know your weaknesses, but yet they don't judge you by your weaknesses. Yeah, we are in a dispensation where people are quick to judge, people are quick to label people, and people are quick to demonize people, and people are quick to cancel people. And it's prevalent in the body of Christ. Prevalent in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a place where people like to isolate themselves. Everybody, isolate yourself. Isolate yourself. Go and do your own thing. Isolate yourself. Nobody loves to collaborate. Collaboration is a game here. Collaboration is a game. Whatever made me strong on Clubhouse was collaboration, and, and it's still collaboration. Whatever made me strong on this app was collaboration. When I came in, everybody that could be helped, I was helping them. Every altar that I could serve, I was serving them. What reduced my activities on all platforms was immediately, immediately I was made the pastor of our church. The, the job became more tedious and I had to shift all our programs to early in the morning, which is why we're having all this now. 
So in the day I'm busy, I can no longer talk again. But those who were with me from 2021 on Clubhouse, they know that I was functioning 247. There were some platforms that people thought I owned those platforms. Many people who knew me from 20, there were platforms who were praying. They thought I was the one controlling the platform, about four or five platforms. I was functioning back to back. Different people's platform, not my own. The spirit and the bride were silent. We were having just Bible studies once in a while. All other platforms where I was functioning, leading them like it was my own platform, selflessly. Not minding that I have my own club and I have things to I should be doing on my own club. It was not my business. The business was the business of God, the business of the kingdom, the business of our father. That was what, what, that was, what was eating me up. People who know your weaknesses, your faults, your weakness might not be about it, it might be deficiency. It might be an area of your life that you need wisdom, an area of your life you're still ignorant. Maybe you don't know how to manage very well. Maybe you don't know this, you don't know that. There, there are things that you are unaware of at the moment. In that area, that's a weakness. It might be outright weakness, when I mean real weakness. Weakness of maybe one or two addictions but most especially the weaknesses that are pronounced to people who are close to you are certain weaknesses in capacity those are the most pronounced weaknesses for some others they might know about your addictions but weaknesses in capacity they know this but they don't judge you by those weaknesses uh, they know where pastor i can be they know the limitations of pastor i but they don't judge him by this by that the next set of people that should be around you are the ones who knows your strength and they want to build you in your strength. They know your strength and they want to build you in your strength. Hmm. That's why when my mama speaks, she said, I know how, we, how you were in 2021 and I know how you have grown. How you have grown over the years. They know your strength. They want you to keep improving on your strength. They are happy for every improvement. Every improvement. Every improvement. If all my members, if you see the messages they send me at the back end, you will wonder why I come here guns blazing, sometimes even when I'm tired. That's why when I come here, I come guns blazing. Like I am standing like, you know, the way, who are you? Who, who you be? Who you? I will deal with you now. That's how I come. You're coming like a lion because you have the backup of many. The encouragement there was. They know your strength and they just love you. They just want you to keep improving under your strength. <laughs> Uh, so when I tell you I have the gift of men, I speak it not from head knowledge. It, it's an experience. I prayed that prayer when I came in, when I came in contact uh, with Bishop Oyedebo. When I when I when we asked one of the pastors, what's the secret of Bishop Oyedebo? He said, "Go home and ask God to give you the gift of men." He said that man has the gift of men. Men who saw his vision. Men who are more passionate about his vision than him. They know the strength and they are, mm, they are pushing him. Say, for him to be where he is, he has this man around him. Say, pray for the gift of men. Because not every time you will be strong, but you need them. The ones that know your strength, not to kill you, not to fight you, not to pull you down from your strength, but they will help you. They will build you in that strength. They will encourage you. They will fire you up. So don't think that Pastor Ike appears here because he knows how to appear. No. There are some words that are fired up in my system, in my spirit. Yesterday I was reading from my mother, Prophetess Patrice. All the things she sent to Anne, Anne sent to me. I was fired up in the spirit. Same yesterday I was reading from Mama Victoria. A few days ago I was reading from Mama T. <laughs> I and several others on this platform who reached out to me one side. You don't know what they do. That's strength. That's fueling the, 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 the car or fueling the machine. Read those words. People appreciating the, the grace of God upon your life. People seeing the strength of God upon your life and praying for you for greater. No, you don't joke with such people. That's why I see me. I don't joke with people on this platform. I don't joke. I don't mess around. Uh, there are people who have put me on the blacklist. I don't care about that. I care less about somebody who puts me on the blacklist. <laughs> who does not like me does not matter. According to Apostle Selman, it's I got that wisdom. I focus on who like me. It is who love me and who like me I focus on. Who does not like me? Mm. It, it, it makes no sense. You are here, you have strength, and people are looking how to pull you down on that strength. You are, you are with the wrong people. 
you need the prud you need the spirit of prudence to be activated. Let the right people come around you. How can you know how to do things and the people around you want to want to pull you down? They are jealous about the strength that God has given you. Instead of celebrating it, they begin to look for ways to pull you down. You are before witchcraft. Anyone here is surrounded by dogs. May the Lord transition you out of that environment. Be with people that knows how to improve you on your strength. To build you up. That shows that you are working in prudence in your relationships. Number three. You need people who are where you want to be. And they will help you grow. People who are where you want to be. And those people have the capacity to help you to grow into it. Surround yourself with people who look like where you are going. Don't always surround yourself with people you are better than. Surround yourself also with people who look like where you are going. People who have attained what you need to attain. And they have the discipline and the willingness of heart to take you there. They are growing and they want to also help you grow. They are where you want to be and they are willing to lend you that help in hand. If you have a friend who is also jealous of you and envious of you, they are grown, they are where you want to be, but they are envious of you not to get there. They are fighting not to get there. You, you ask for their help, they don't want to help you. They dodge you because they don't want you to know what they know or to get to the level where they are. You're just with the wrong set of people. The, for, the fourth one, he said, those who fight your battles even at your absence. These are the four kinds of persons that when they surround you, it's a proof and a testament that your relationship is guarded by prudence. The ones who can fight for you at your absence. Anybody who joins your enemies to kill you at your absence is already your enemies. You never had a friend that you can confide on. Anybody at all who can, who can fight you in your absence, they gossip, they criticize you, they talk down on you, they tarnish your reputation, your integrity. Anybody who can reveal your secret, the secret you told them confidentially, and at your back, they reveal those secrets to others and make a mockery of you. It's a testament that you are with a very dangerous kind of friend. It's a very, very, very bad place to be. Be with people who can fight for you. While you are not there, they can defend you. Anybody can bring up anything against you and they will stand their ground and defend you and say, well, I know him, but I don't know you. You are telling me he did this. I know him, but I don't know you. So carry your gossip and live here. When you have such men like this, they won't, they won't listen to gossip. And if you are such, you won't listen to gossip. Nobody can bring gossip, malicious words, lies to you to speak about anybody. You don't entertain rubbish. People you love, you defend them. If they are your spouse, you defend them. Somebody met one man and said, I saw your wife with a man and all that. And the, the man walked the man out. He said, will you get out of my house? My wife, I know my wife, but you, I don't know. He came to tell me that my wife is, is having relationships with another man. I know my wife. I married her for over 20 something years. But you, the stranger, I don't know you. Get out of my house. That is prudence. But there are some people that will hear that. Mm. And their mood will change. The woman will be in trouble and she's coming back. They will believe everything. Those who fight for you. You need them in your life. Then there are also four dangerous people you need to move away from. Prudence must make you discern them if they're around you. Four very dangerous people you don't need around you. I've mentioned four people that must be around you. Four dangerous people that you don't need them to be around you. You need to employ the wisdom of prudence to fish them out around your circle if they are there. Number one is the critics, those who criticize. Not constructive criticism, but those who are saying things that are harmful to you, things that can destroy your self-confidence, things that can destroy your integrity, those who are out there to assassinate your character, what we call character assassination. If your friend is engaging in this kind of critics, they are always criticizing you and each time they do that, you lose your self-esteem, your self-worth, your self-confidence. You have a friend who goes around to criticize you and their, criti their criticism can tarnish your reputation, your brand and your integrity. Yeah, you are with the wrong kind of person. 
prudence insists that you run away from that person. Don't think about what am I losing. Mm -mm. Run for your life. Your life is under danger. Number two are envious people. Envious people. These people are driven by jealousy about you. And we do anything to crush your dreams and your advancement in life. Run away from people who are envious about you. Envy is, why should it be you and not me? Why should it happen for you and not me? Why will God bless you and not me? Why will the miracle happen for you and not me? Why will they promote you and not me? Why will you buy a car and not me? Why will you build your house and not me? Why will she marry and not me? I've told you that story here. The lady was about to get married and brought her friend to be her chief bridesmaid. Her friend, come and be my chief bridesmaid. They rejoice, they jump. Oh, oh, we are happy for you. You want to get married? The friend went to the back and met the husband to be and said, You want to go and marry her? You want to go and marry her? Are we sure that she has a womb? This lady has done six abortions for her ex boyfriend. <laughs> The heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Mm. Friends, may God save you from evil friends. May God save you from evil relationships. Any of you here, that people that, that are within your circle are envious of you, may God liberate you from them in the name of Jesus. Mm. Let me hear an amen to that. Let me know that somebody heard that prayer. Amen. 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 <laughs> Please be awake now. Don't don't go. Don't let anybody go. If you want to leave this room now, tell that devil that wants to make you to leave this room to leave me alone. Let me stay now. I need to hear this. But some of you, there are people you need to just knock the gong on their ear by sharing and tell them, wake up. This is your problem. For many of you right now, your problem is not demons. Your problem is this thing I'm saying now. The influence, the friends around you are killing you. The people in your circle. Are killing you. I'm, not, I'm trying not to, not to go into the relationship that much because that's a topic for those in the study room. Because when it comes to relationship, I'm an expert in that one. Not relationship on marriage. Oh. Mm -mm. It's a relationship. When they talk about general relationship and how to relate with every human being, how to interact, I love the subject more. That's my key area of interest. Envious people. They are there. Many of you, you have people like that. Your uncles are there. Some of your aunties are there. Some of you, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your colleagues in the office. They are there. You can see them. They are envious about you. So they can go out of their way to crash your dreams, to crash anything about you, to stop your advancement because they are envious. So what will benefit you? They will go and speak to those on top and say, no, don't give it to her or don't give it to him. And yet they are your friends. They will laugh. They'll smile with you. They will eat with you and you sleep on the same bed. So, went to the back, told the man, this lady you're about to get married to has done six abortions for her ex. And the ex was not the previous ex. The ex was something that happened many years ago that she has even forgotten and she has not done abortions since then again. Just the days of foolishness. And she confided on her friend like, these are the things we did when we were very crazy but thank god now we know better and this friend used that thing against her so all of a sudden she discovered that the the man who declared interest in her refrained we drew every wedding engagement for no just cause without really explaining what is going on the next wedding card that came out it was the friend who was supposed to be the chief bridesmaid was not the bride to be to be married to her own fiancé. What a wicked word. So the friend Johnny to make sure that she crashed her dreams of marriage. What a wicked word. If you have such around you, somebody is already showing tendencies of envy. They get angry when you get promoted. They get angry maybe when something new happens for you. You, buy, you bought a car, you bought a land or you made an investment just you had a promotion something that we should rejoice and be happy 
and the person is showing signs of envy you tell them and all of a sudden their character and their mood change come let's hang out let's celebrate my promotion and they're like oh, don't worry don't worry i don't want to hang out i don't want to hang out don't worry don't worry now i don't want to hang out we'll talk later uh -huh. and you have the sun it and you're just murmuring it in your heart like it seems like this my friend is jealous <laughs> my friend in nigeria they say pull your slippers and run let your the, the back of your leg <laughs> be touching the back of your head that's how we say it in nigeria run let the let your legs be touching the back of your head that's the kind of race you run run have the confidence to end certain relationships have this mindset that you don't need everybody to succeed if somebody's not flying in the direction you're flying feel free to wave them goodbye you don't need everybody to succeed in your life you must have that you must be rest assured have, have that have that uh, assurance in your spirit i don't need everybody to succeed if you're not driving in the angle i'm driving if you're not headed in my direction if, we are, if our beliefs are not aligning, I will wave you goodbye. I'm not in enmity with you, but we are not going in the same direction. So goodbye. See you on the top. Just take your own direction to the top. Let me take my own direction. For my safety, for my peace of mind, I've had to wave many people that way. We are not going in the same direction. The envy was too much. I had to tell them, for peace to reign, goodbye. May God bless you. The sky is big enough to fly. It is impossible for two birds to collide. So fly. See you on the top. But not in my direction. There are many people have done that way and I had to let them go. It's not pride. It is me choosing my peace of mind to troubles. Unnecessary and needless troubles. When you design people with envy around you, stop praying for their repentance. Leave them alone because envy is very dangerous. Leave them alone and walk your own path. Wave them bye-bye like Abraham waved Lord bye-bye. It doesn't mean that when they call for help, you can't help them. We can help you, but our paths can't cross anymore. We have to go different directions. The number three people you must avoid, dangerous people that you need to watch out for is the opportunist the opportunist these are people who are with you because of who you are they are with you because of who you are sorry these are people who are with you not because of who you are but for what you are these are people who come to you not because of who you are they are just with you because of what you are i've had many of those people in my life in yesteryears they come to you because of what they see in you that they can use to their own advantage. Now, they will love you for your goodwill. They will love you for your platforms. Leaders, I'm talking to you as well, those of you who are in leadership and those of you who have one or two things that you're leading people, you must be wary of this. You must, be, you must watch out for the opportunists. They're always in every, in, every, in every church, in every business, in every organization, in anything at all that has structure, these people are there. Why are they there? <laughs> you will soon know. They will love you for your goodwill and your platform. Once they get access to your goodwill and your platform, they will use it to advance their own personal interest. Once they have access to you, have access to your platform, have access to your endorsements, they will use that access for their own personal interest. They are not interested in you, but they are interested in the influence you have. Yes, you have. So they will use the influence you have to build their own influence and they will rival you in the end. Be very careful about such people. We've had situations where we have sent pastors in some of our local churches to go and uh, hold the branches there. Only for them to build their influence using those branches, using those churches. Immediately they built an influence, they divided the church and left with the members, abandoning the church. I've shared the stories here. Many of our churches in my local assembly suffered that fate. Many of the pastors took the members and opened their own, opened their own churches, became their own general overseers. At first, they were humble, loyal. They will talk about the vision of the church. They will celebrate the sent man or the set man over the commission. They will celebrate everybody celebratable. They will act as if they are genuinely interested in the vision of the church, genuinely interested in you, but they have an ulterior motive. Once they have gained strength, they will not rival you. They will not fight you. The opportunity is be careful of people. 
that's why uh, uh, anywhere I go, I try to respect the system and I try not to break ranks. I try to respect the ordinances around that system. I try not to break ranks. I won't go to somebody's platform and begin to take phone numbers of people on that platform or begin to have a back-end communication with the people from those platforms in order to prophesy to them, to give them more, like some people do that. When they come to your platform, they come to your church, they preach, they take numbers, they take contacts of your members and they go from behind to begin to pastor them. So you who is pastoring them, you don't know what you're pastoring. It is them that, that you invited that knows how to pastor. It's a very dangerous practice. Opportunist. You're envying somebody. You're eyeing somebody's position. Use it as an opportunity. Learn what they are doing and come back to rival them to fight them. So many of them are there. They are learning businesses from you. They are learning skills from you. Some of them are learning certain things from you. By the time they are through with their learning, hmm, they will be the one who will oppose you. They will be the one who will fight you. Yeah, when they do that, know that these are the opportunists. They, did, they never needed you. They just needed your influence. They are not concerned about who you are. They are just concerned about what you are. We find these things, most especially in the political arena as well. As a politician is right there, in his glory days, there will be many of these people. They are hailing him. They are there. They are all there at his back for what they want because of the influence he carries at the moment. Let him leave that political position. They will abandon him and look for the next person. <laughs> I heard some governors in Nigeria speaking and they said, wow, they never believed that their life could be so quiet, that their house can be so quiet. That while they were governors every day, they can't rest. People are coming. Immediately they finish serving, everybody ran. Nobody visits them. No, all the phone calls, nobody calls them. All their friends forgot them. And one of the governors laughed at the governor because he, that was his first time of experiencing it. He said, that's easy. We have experienced it. While you're in the office, people will be celebrated. You can't rest. Everybody's looking for an opportunity. Once you leave the office, everybody abandons you. The opportunist. They are not interested with uh, uh, because of who you are, but for what you are. They will love your goodwill. They will love your platform. They will love your influence. All they are needing is for you to give them access, give them endorsement. They will come. They will bow. They will say nice things about you. They might even post your, 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 your picture everywhere on social media celebrating you. All they are looking for is just access. Give them access. Once they have grown, the Bible says when Uzziah, when Uzziah was strong, his heart was lifted. Once they become strong, hmm, they will rival you. They will be the one to fight you. Devil was in this category. Satan was an opportunist. He thought he knew all about God because he had access to the throne of grace. So he felt that he knew God. And he wanted to use the position, the access that God gave him to fight God. But God brought him down to the ground. The last one, the last people you must be wary about, that you must watch out for, is the cheaters. The cheaters. Those who take from you, they suck you. They only call you when they need something from you. These people, their ministry is to steal from you. They will never call you for any other thing. They only call you when they need help. When they are in problems. Those are the times they call you. They will never call you for any other thing. Every time you see their call, there's a problem. They need money. They need an assistant. They need help. Nothing else. Their call is all about taking away from you. Stealing from you. Help me. I have a need. They keep sucking and sucking from you. Their friendship with you is all about sucking away from you. They can never give. There is nothing they are giving back in that relationship. All they do is to suck. Suck. They suck your energy, suck your emotions, suck your time, suck your resources. Everything about you, they keep stealing from you. So, remember these four things I have mentioned. The critics. Number two, I said the... The... Those who are envious. The opportunists. And the cheaters. These four dangerous people, you must push them away from your life. How do you manage these things? Prudence. The ones I say you should attract, prudence will attract them. These ones I say you should be wary and push them far away from you. Prudence is what manages this. So I've looked at prudence from the angle of managing your relationships because we are talking about wisdom. Wisdom is not only receive it, receive it. Wisdom is 
also embedded in your thinking, your reasoning. Now go back and manage and look into your circle. Many of you need to audit your circle. Many of you need to kiss some of your friends goodbye. Just like Laban kicked, kissed Jacob goodbye. So many of you, you need to kiss some of your friends goodbye. Some of your allies goodbye. Because they fall into this category. They fall into one or two of these categories of people that you must be wary about. I can tell you, Jonadab, Ammon, that relationship ended the life of Ammon untimely. Amaziah um, and um, um, trying to remember that person. I, I'm trying to remember who he went to see and Jehu met him there and killed him. He was not supposed to die. But friendship ended his life untimely. There are people that are not supposed to be in your circle because they will end your life untimely. They will stop what God wants to do in your life. They will end your seasons untimely. Prudence says, when you see these dangers, these four dangers I've mentioned, hide yourself. End the relationship. If it's coming from your spouse, uh, use wisdom and know how to stop it. And know how you're going to end it. If it's coming from somebody you're planning to marry, then end the relationship. End it. There's no point of even going further if they have these tendencies. If it's coming from your friends, whether they are childhood friends, end it. If it's coming from your colleagues, ask God for wisdom on how to manage them because you're still in the same office with them. If it's coming from your boss, ask God how to manage it. Or ask God for a, for a change of job and move away. Harboring these people within your circle can be very dangerous. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, say this prayers after me. Lord Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner and I can't help myself. Cleanse me from all my sins and impurities. I believe with my heart and confess with my mouth that you came and died and resurrected on the third day for my justification. I receive you into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Give me the grace to live for you and empower me to live holy and blameless until your appearing. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I am born again. Amen.